Okay, chapter 13 of the NASM 7th edition, uh, Certified Personal Trainer Certification Textbook. And chapter 13, um, you got to take a step back now. They, they want you to slow down for a second. Chapter 13 is a, it's a short chapter, and it's now giving, it's giving you the opportunity to take a deep breath and um, focus in on the OPT model, the Optimum Performance Training model and and really what they're doing in this chapter is they're giving you a chance to kind of you know take a general broad overview before before we hit into the subsequent chapters that'll speak about the um uh the actual components that go into into training so integrated training um really is is going to be the focus now for the basically the rest of the rest of the book and integrated training basically says that if you take, you're going to take all of the all of the variables, the components of training, from flexibility to resistance to cardiovascular to um, speed, agility, quickness, plyometrics, all of these different variables that we've been using for and doing for, you know, decades and decades and decades. Well, um, all of those variables uh, to be the most effective that they can be for our client need to be need to be sort of uh, systematically systematically uh, put together right and so integrated training is really all about taking all of those and putting it into a system and then that's what the OPT optimum performance training model really does is it systematizes now we've systematized things informally in the fitness and uh, training you know training universe Bodybuilders and weightlifters, powerlifters are very systematic in one sense, focusing on resistance training, using cardio as needed. For instance, um, marathon runners and endurance athletes have always used systematized ways to get better at their particular sport. Um, but this is different. Integrated training says we're going to use all of those elements in the proper in the proper sequencing in the proper proper levels of intensity proper um, amount of time for our client to accomplish the client's goals so integrated training again takes all of these variables necessary variables flexibility for instance um, and uses those variables in a systematized way to, to help our clients. And helping our clients simply means not only helping them achieve their goals, but helping them to, um, to alleviate or eliminate issues and problems they, they may actually have that would slow down their progress or even stop, uh, stop their progress or ability to, um, to achieve those particular goals. And it doesn't matter who it is, right? The systems, systems should be able to work for pretty much anybody, right? Because all you're going to do is modify and change those variables. And that's what the OPT model um, is presented here is supposed to do. So, so that's what you're going to see in chapter 13. You know, the systematic and progressive way in which um, the OPT model is laid out is really what you're trying now to, to understand and memorize when you go through chapter 13. So the number of tables in here, that I would um, highly recommend reading through. Your main focus of memorization um, is going to be the sort of this, this step stepwise pyramid fashion or moving through progressively through the different the different phases of the uh, of the model itself. And you're going to be able to understand a little bit more about range of motion, planes of motion, um, and then you'll get to the acute variables on page 423 and you got to slow down a little bit now and make sure you get you get it with acute variables okay the acute variables of training meaning those um, those different elements of a training routine that you can isolate look at and make modifications to depending on what the goals are so the acute variables are repetitions sets training intensity rest intervals, the total training volume, each one of those you can make modifications to. So they are acute variables, meaning they are the things that you're doing while you're training, but they can be modified, right? 
And that's what you're memorizing. You're, you're really going to look at, um, as you continue further through the textbook, you're gonna be memorizing how the acute variables change based on, uh, based on the, the different phases that you're in through the OPT model um, and what the client's goals really are. And so um, chapter 13, as we continue to go through this, chapter 13 is really designed to help you slow down take a deep breath and get a good broad overview of exactly what the OPT model looks like, tastes and feels like, so to speak. So training based on assessment results. <clears throat> Again, this idea that you have acute variables that you're gonna be able to modify as well as utilizing, see, this is where the systematic part of this comes in. You know, normally if you trained a, if you trained a bodybuilder, for instance, just as an example, it could be any athlete, you're not normally looking at an assessment to kind of get enough training. Basically, we would say to a competitive bodybuilder, you need to do this, 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 and this without even looking at the individual um, and determining whether or not they have, they have muscle imbalances, uh, musculoskeletal issues, things like that. That doesn't make a whole lot of sense. And in, and in a systematic model like we have here, the goal is to do assessments, look at individuals prior to training them, do the, do the screenings um, and, and make sure you know what you're dealing with first before you move that individual into a training scenario. So you're training based on assessment results. Uh, most of this is just intuitive. It makes sense, it really does. So introduction to integrated training concepts. So flexibility training, cardio, uh, cardio respiratory training, each one of these right now will have a table that tells you the benefits. You should be able to know these with your eyes closed. You really should. So if you don't, then you definitely need to memorize these tables and understand what the benefits are of cardiorespiratory training, core training, balance training. You see, these are the these are the variables that are going to um, that are going to be involved in this integration. So you're going to integrate all of these, flexibility, cardio, core, balance, plyometrics, speed, agility, and resistance training into, into an entire training scenario. It doesn't mean that every client is gonna do every one of these. Um, reactive training or plyometric training is not, a, not something that you're gonna do very often with a whole lot of clients. It's really more for athletes and individuals that have much you know, much different goals than the average apparently healthy person. Same thing with speed or SAQ training, uh, speed, agility, quickness training. Um, and then of course, resistance training, which is what we tend to, you know, look at and understand as, as really the, the main, you know, the main bread and butter of, of personal trainers. But, you know, we, we also have to make sure we understand the flexibility, the balance training, all of those are critical elements to put into a training program. So, so now here you have the optimum performance training model. It has uh, five phases, okay? So phase one is the stabilization endurance. And there's a reason why NASM has put it together like this. And it's a, it's a really good system and it makes a, makes a whole lot of sense. Spend a little bit of time reading through because this is conceptually really important to help you appreciate and understand what you're gonna see later when it comes to the specifics and how acute variables are determined in the training in the training program. So phase one, stabilization, endurance, you should memorize these and have these memorized by heart. Phase two um, is strength endurance. Phase three, muscular development. Phase four, maximal strength. Phase five is power. So um, those phases, um, all fit within all fit within these different levels. There's three levels, right? Stabilization level one, level two is strength, level three is power. But again, there's five phases. So as you move through here, you're going to get an idea, not not ultra specific, but a general idea of what the of what the model looks like, why it is designed, the way it is designed, and how it can systematically help individuals. And it makes sense from a purely scientific perspective. So you're going to also need to memorize supersets because that's what is used predominantly in phase two, where we do, um, we do strength endurance supersets, muscular development training, maximal strength, and then into the power training. I would not get 
too caught up with memorizing every element here, but we're already at the end of the chapter. Like I say, chapter 13 is really designed to slow you down, take a deep breath, and get a general broad overview of what the model looks like. What is it? Why is it designed like this? And exactly what are those, um, those phases? What are they designed to do? What do they look like? What's their purpose? Um, and then as you get to the very end, of course, read through the summary, chapter review, and, um, and then your chapter highlights. So again, chapter 13, very important, short as it is, really important chapter. And I look forward to seeing you uh, in chapter 14.